hi um there is a lot to say let me start with i am so sorry that it's taken me so long to do another video but since mid-december when i posted the last video we hadn't been to the boat in about three weeks and a lot happened and i didn't video any of it because it was just I don't even know why I just forgot basically because I had so many things to do and I just didn't get to it and I still haven't really had a full day on the boat um, but a bunch of little things have happened and I just want to fill you in so right now Pierce and I are visiting my brother in Tennessee so I have on my cozy cozy we're supposed to get a snowstorm um today or tomorrow so that should be fun pierce is excited to see the snow um so i'm here and i thought well let me just do let me just tell you what's going on i know it's not really what you want to see you want to see sailing you want to see boat stuff and that's um you know we're getting there i want to see that too and i don't even know how you know how it is that I haven't been on the boat in this long, but that's how it is. So let's go back to December. I have a 40 foot hunter from 1984. She is an antique and it was really messy when I got it. Messier than I thought actually. Um, and I've been cleaning and just bringing it back into nice condition over the course of the last, I guess, four or five months that I've actually had her. Um, it's been a learning experience and super fun so far. So right now, I, well, in mid-December, I was working on the aft head. The tank was um, smelling. And so every time I used the toilet, there would be this smell. It's kind of like an old fishy smell. And I, I was trying to figure it out because it didn't smell like sewage. Um, but the guy who owned it before said he didn't really use the tank. He just pumped it overboard, whatever they did, which I'm guessing was just number one, not number two. So when i was pumping it it was making this horrible smell so i thought well maybe it's the seawater stuck in the hose from flushing and it's just sitting there too long because it's not like we're there using it every day um I, we're not living aboard because there are no liveaboard slips available otherwise we would be living aboard and then i'm sure it would have been a bigger issue much sooner but it's taken me this long to figure this out. So I spent the night, two nights in a row, the second night I flushed and I was hearing this, you know, water sound. And I was like, I don't, I don't know what that is. So, but it was freaking me out. So I opened up the bilge and sure enough, there's water just dumping into the bilge and it was stinky. So, I was like, well, let me see if it has to do with the toilet. So I dumped some fresh water down the toilet. I pumped it again and sure enough, it all was going into the bilge. And I was like, oh wow, I, I have a leak in my tank. That's not good. Um, and the switch on the wall had been mislabeled. So I thought I was pumping overboard, but it was actually pumping to the tank because of a mislabel. Yeah, let's just gloss over that. So <laughs> then, then I then I figured that out. That's like previously I had figured out that it was mislabeled and I was moved it to tank because I don't want to pump overboard because I'm in the marina. So I moved it to the tank and now I was pumping and there was no smell. Everything was good until this one night when I just heard water gushing into the bilge and I was like, oh, okay. so. Obviously, I've reached a certain point in the tank where there's a hole. And the next day, um, I was leaving. So I didn't have time to bring it to the pump out. But I used the wet vac and I 
sucked up all the water from the bilge and I just had to go. So, and it was another two weeks before I was able to get back. is all stained so now the floor is dark and I, I was pretty pissed actually so first order of business was to go to the pump out and decided to you know pump it out first then fill it with water then pump it out again so I'm filling it with water and all of a sudden water starts shooting out of the side of the boat and I'm like cursing like like a sailor <laughs> because I can do that. I'm not gonna do it now, but all the words you can think of, that's what I was saying. I was so mad. Um, we had dumped a bottle of bleach down there also. And of course it was not only coming out the vent hose out of the side of the boat, but it was also dumping into the bilge. So now it was all wet again. Next order of business, use the shop vac, suck it all up. I brought in a dehumidifier, dehumidifying it, and we're just gonna abandon that tank. This is an abandoned tank situation. On further inspection, it turns out that this year, 1984 Hunter is known for the aft tanks cracking the aft holding tank cracking, or the lid pops off or something. It's like the, there's a crack in the lid. Now the tank is fiberglassed into the hull and it also doesn't have any access. The discolored flooring would be a perfect spot to create an access panel where there isn't one. And my dad, of course, is rearing to go on that because anything that involves wood, he's on it. Or um, machinery. He loves that. So I don't know, we might put in an access panel, maybe cut out the old tank and install a new one. I, or, you know, the great thing about this boat is that it has two heads. So we just go to the forward head and get that one running. Now that forward head has not been used um, for many years. It was a storage spot basically it had sails and buoys and you know pfds in there all kinds of stuff was in there extra line um and it actually took me a couple months even to get in there of cleaning because there was so much stuff on the boat so now that i'm actually you know we have access um and this boat is not known for having problems with the forward tank and the forward tanks in a whole different location. So apparently the aft tank that's fiberglassed into the hull, it's on the side, it's on the port side underneath the nav desk. And when the boat flexes and moves, it has a tendency to crack. Um, that's what I read on a couple of forums and I didn't find a whole lot of information on it, just that, just that little bit but nothing about the forward tank. And the forward tank is accessible. It has a macerator. And my guess is they were using the aft so they didn't bother with the forward. It's smaller. Um, the macerator doesn't have any power to it. So that's gonna be fun running, line, running uh, power lines up there and connecting all that. Um, but that is not my first order of business because after so many boat projects, I just wanna go sailing and I don't need a head to go sailing. We can go to the bathroom before we go and then go sailing and just, you know, if we're far enough offshore, we can just pump out over overboard. Um, no number twos, go before, <laughs> go beforehand. And let's get out on the Gulf and put up these sails. 
I'm dying to actually sail. Um, I will have to do that project at some point, but it's not my first project. The first project in order to go sailing is to rearrange the solar panels because right now the corners, which are very sharp, are literally at eye level when you're in the cockpit. So if you're walking on the sides of the boat and you like step into the cockpit, the solar panel edge, which is like sharp aluminum is like literally right at your eye. And when you're in the water heaving around, um, I just don't think that's safe. And I know that the previous owner sailed around like that, but I just, I don't want to take that sort of chance. I don't think it's a good chance to take. So we're going to reconfigure the solar and just move it aft a little more. And, um, then go sailing. That's the plan. And moving the solar is going to happen next week. And that's it. Then I'm going out sailing. I don't care about the head right now. I just want to sail. <laughs> so that's that. That's the update. And I'm sorry that it's not more dynamic this week, but, and I'm sorry that it's taken me so long to get this out and about, but this is, this is life, right? This is life. Single mom life too. And I have other job, you know, I'm a photographer. So I'm like doing my job, doing the boat. We've been living at my parents in the guest room, me and my child who's 10, you've met Pierce, since July. So six months in the guest room with all of our stuff in boxes. We recently got an apartment to spread out and get our bearings. And that has really taken the pressure off, which is great, but that is not changing the objective to live on this boat. So we um, just have a little more space to breathe, which is great. And a little more room to spread out and think because a lot of it is thinking, right? What project to do next and how do we do it? So the next thing is how to do the solar panels. So we're thinking of building the panel on the ground, on the dock, and then taking the whole panel up and attaching it instead of, I have four solar panels. So instead of just moving each one individually and putting them together one by one, we're gonna put the whole rack together and then lift it up and install it on top of the um, bimini cover. If you have any ideas about that, let me know. The backstay is right in the middle of where the solar panels are now. So I understand the layout of it now, but I just don't find it safe to have those panels there. And I could take the front one and just rotate it to the back. And maybe I'll do that. I don't know. Um, but I think we're going to move them right now. They're like this. There's two like this and then two, and we're going to move them like this. So it'll be one, two, three, four, like that. I think that'll work better. And I think it'll be more accessible and it'll give us that forward part of the bimini, which will be the first port point of contact. This will be the soft rail um, instead of the pointy edge of the solar panel. That is the plan. So let's see if that goes according to plan because so far not much has gone according to plan. <laughs> One of the things that I did do that was easy is installing the new lights. That turned out to be easy. The lights that I got were flush mount and they're flush mount LEDs. And so basically they do not hold the wires and there's no space in the headliner to stuff the wires. So I ordered these so I can easily stuff the wires in here and then we get a nice little rocker switch. And these are also LED, I don't know if you can see, oh, there it is. You can see right in there, the LED. So that's pretty cool. We had a long light here, which I took off. Um, so I sent those back and I got another LED marine light, which is right here, which has ample space to stuff those wires in. So that's what I'm doing today. I was using these backwards for a while. That was interesting. Um, 
I stripped all of these wires. If one of these heat shrinked already, and I'm gonna do this other one. Um, load them all in here together and heat shrink it up. There are four wires coming in here. If I've learned one thing, don't fix it if it ain't broken. I don't know why there's four, but there is a reason. I am just gonna put all four of these in there and call it a day. We're actually gonna use these on the correct side now that we've learned our lesson. You know, I never thought that I would be doing this in my life, and here I am. <laughs> it's kind of fun. <laughs> Unexpected adventure. Oh, and there will be more unexpected adventures. I love a good adventure. That was great. So I've changed all the incandescent bulbs right now to LED, and nice. Everything runs off the solar, which is also nice. And so we are ready to rock. Where does the bark go? Wheelbarrow. Look at the buggy. Mm. One more thing that I do want to do is take the RV AC out of that hatch and get my hatch back. I want my hatch back. <laughs>